Hi everyone, James Jesus SEC here. I'm uh, just in my kitchen at the moment, as you can see. Here I am in the kitchen, and uh, I'm just about to go into my shack actually. And a lovely sunny day here today, so I'm hoping this video comes out. There's my dog there. <laughs> I'm hoping he behaves himself while I do this video. And this video is going to be uh, on the uh, the uh, LP500 mainly. Let me just uh, go into my shack here. Let me just uh, there's the shack to show you it quickly. And uh, this is where it all happens. <laughs> I'm hoping he'll uh, behave. I've got a little whippet. His name's Blue. He's actually a bluey colour grey. And uh, I'm hoping he uh, behaves today. Right, go in there. Go in there. That's it. You go out there. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Let's hope you don't get disturbed. Um, okay, so uh, here I am in the shack. Uh, just a quick rundown on what everything is. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen uh, my shack before. And uh, basically... Uh, I've got my uh, rotator here. This is going out to uh, the uh, antennas outside. Let me just show you quickly. Uh, this here, uh, four four cables going out to the tower, and uh, the uh, tower's an 80 foot tower, uh, heavy duty Ultron tower. So I can just show you quickly. Opening the back garden quickly. If I just show you out there, you can actually see uh, the tower. It's uh, up at the moment, uh, extremely uh, about sort of uh, I don't know 60 uh, something feet at the moment. Hang on a second. I can pair that up there. Antenna, hang on. I don't know if you can see it or not. Okay, so uh, that's the tower. And all the cables go underground uh, to the uh, tower basin to get into the garden and do some more uh, garden work. And the new cable's going to be fitted in the summer. So uh, a tiny little bit cold for that at the moment. I'm just waiting for the warm weather. This is my uh, weather clock. It looks a bit pinky in the video, but it's actually red LEDs. But it basically keeps me an eye on the the wind uh, speeds and stuff outside so uh, don't have to worry about when the tower's up at full height because it's uh, very very high it's about sort of 50 at full height it uh, towers above my house about 55 feet above the roof so uh, I always try and um, keep an eye on the wind speed at the moment it's not too bad it's only about 5.3 so uh, I can have it up really anything up to about 40 45 and then uh, I'll bring it down a little bit okay so uh, that's the rotator here just switch on is my uh, Yesu rotator which I use and speed control it's also con uh, connected to the computer and the logging program I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute um, I use a, a, a distribution board for uh, all my power uh, outputs and uh, uh, really strongly you uh, know really strongly recommend it fantastic uh, piece of kit and uh, but made by West Mountain Radio as you'll see here and uh, it's all uh, protected and when it comes to changing a fuse I just uh, basically have to slot in a new car fuse and so it works really really well all cables go uh, through the um, boards here and uh, the uh, power supply I'm using is uh, a Dower PS304 the old faithful and I had to uh, replace some uh, um, um, uh, tubes in it uh, not tubes uh, transistors uh, not long ago and uh, after that it was working fine again so uh, if your power supply goes check a look at the uh, the transistors because it's uh, more than likely uh, those uh, nasty things gone or leaking like mine was uh, I've got a Kenwood uh, 950 SDX here um, I got uh, for audio equipment I'm using uh, two racks two racks here I'm using a mic 2200 a Behringer 2846 and uh, I'm using uh, uh, EQ Plus for a little bit of the uh, smoothing of the audio and just a slight enhancement after the audio racks. I use an I Plus, you know, which is uh, basically for uh, matching the line levels down to uh, uh, mic levels from the radios. So obviously uh, I don't get any problems when it comes to using audio rack equipment. And I can match those levels down nicely between the three radios. Um, here is a little radio uh, which I've not long got. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you're not getting too much glare. Let's just... Uh, knock that um, brightness down a little bit that's the only problem with these cameras they uh, pick up so much brightness but this is the um, the uh, uh, 5100 I use the 5100 mainly for D star I use I use it when I'm out in the car I've got a little uh, Bluetooth microphone here and uh, a fantastic little thing just clip that on my uh, my coat when I'm out in the car and uh, I'm always on D star yapping around the world you've probably uh, one of those people that just got this video and you've already spoken to me on D star but uh, that's uh, that's what I use mainly the uh, the uh, 5100 for uh, this one this on this side is on our local repeater and this is obviously uh, my de designated uh, frequency for D star the actual uh, little uh, um, 
what I use as a hotspot and uh, what I use for D-Star, let me just show you quickly, this is a, a little magnetic case. I'll just open that up, you'll see I've got here a, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a, a DV Mega Board and uh, takes uh, uh, four 6,000 milliamp batteries, so I've got 24,000 milliamp uh, uh, of power. It will last me a good couple of days, so I only have to charge it now and again, and I can take it out in the car with me, just shove it in the glove box, and that's all I really need. Uh, for D-Star and got no uh, D-Star repeaters local to where I am so uh, that's what I actually do uh, over here I'll just show you very quickly uh, here is a hotspot there's a tiny little hotspot that I use for D-Star purely for D-Star and when I'm out in the car I uh, put it in the car as well on the uh, on the windscreen and uh, basically uh, fantastic can't really fault it it's got a great coverage and I usually use it on 4G all around town uh, or 3G and it's mostly 4G where I live, and all around town, uh, no problem at all. Uh, D-Star, um, you know, great, absolutely great. And uh, so a little bit more of a rundown. The main radio is the uh, ICOM 7800. Absolutely love this radio. It's a fantastic bit of kit. And very soon, well, not maybe not soon, <laughs> sometime in the next year, I'm going to upgrade her into the 7851, which would be nice. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, maybe sometime later in the year, uh, maybe just before Christmas, something like that. And uh, maybe I'll treat myself for Christmas present. I had, I had this radio for uh, about three years now, and she's absolutely fantastic. Love her to bits. I wouldn't use anything else, really, uh, unless it's a 7851, of course. The uh, auto tuner I'm using is uh, the only bit of MFJ equipment I've got, but I actually like. Um, my friend had one, tried it, I fell in love with it. I thought, brilliant, just what I want, right price. Uh, I've modified mine slightly, I don't know if you can see the meter in there. It looks brighter than what it actually is in real life. It's just that the camera doesn't like it, it's picking up on it. And basically, um, it's not as bright as what it does look like on the, on the camera here. Um, but uh, love the tuner, it's very, very quick, it's never let me down. I can uh, anything up to one and a half kilowatt through it, and it's never let me down basically. So for MFJ, I quite like this piece of kit. Um, this is the LP500. I'm hoping you can see this and it's not getting too much glare. I've got it actually on the lowest setting. I'm going to talk about that in a minute because this is the new piece of kit that is really, really special. Really love this pillar kit. It's a VSWR power meter and spectrum analyzer all in one. It's absolutely gorgeous bit of kit. And uh, the, uh, the antenna switching system is uh, made by W2IHY. And I use that for all the radios. It's got an Icon 7800, got the 950. I've also got a Flex Radio, Flex 5000, which is under the desk, and sometimes use that. So uh, basically I switch between the three radios to four antennas outside on the tower. And then uh, I can switch across the wire antennas. I, I've also got a six meter beam. Uh, well, it says six meter beam there. Um, I've hardly ever used it, <laughs> but it's nice to be able to switch it across. I've got a 17 meter dipole, and I've uh, got a, a doublet antenna, got a G5RV, and the HF beam, which is the uh, Force 12, a six element uh, beam and that uh, works extremely well very nice and directional uh, the amplifier is uh, an acom 1010 amplifier i'm hoping you're uh, seeing this okay <laughs> my camera's not the best it's uh, quite an old camera so uh, it might be a bit grainy in places but at least uh, gets the information across but that's the amplifier never had a problem with it it's quick to tune and uh, it's not solid state but uh, i quite like messing about and sort of tuning it very easy basically uh, when you're tuning you're just looking for this light to go in the middle and it's tuned basically and uh, just select uh, your uh, frequency whatever and band that you're on and goods to go you know and this is the MOS key uh, now and again I have a, a little play on MOS and this is an original key not to uh, the uh, so original J key J38 if you can see that there J38 and uh, when I got it it's actually a guy that actually restored it it's actually about 50 years old this key but uh, beautiful key I also use it for when I'm tuning I didn't just uh, show you if I put it on CW just very quickly um, if I go up on 10 meters let's just uh, go to 10 meters a minute quickly yep we're on 10 I just use it to tune and then I can just do this and uh, she's tuning nicely and you'll see uh, there she is on the uh, LP500 uh, and the microphone is uh, an Electra Voice RE320 and uh, I've always uh, loved this voice. Tried loads and loads of uh, um, microphones to fit my voice, and this was the only one that really gave me uh, that uh, non sibilance uh, to my audio. So I really uh, do love this uh, microphone. It's uh, 
it's been a, you know, a, a perfect match for my voice, so to speak. Everyone says I sound good on it, so I'll just keep it, really, <laughs> and stop messing about. Now, the three, uh, the three monitors, this one's uh, obviously coming from the, the radio, uh, from the 7800 that I'm using. I've just got it on a quiet frequency. It's on 10 meters at the moment. There's not, not a lot of activity on there. So I thought I'd just uh, come up on 10 so we can I can show you in a minute the LP500 working. Uh, this uh, is a Mac Logger DX. Um, absolutely love this logging program. It's absolutely superb in every single way. Uh, there is none better, not in my opinion. I've uh, tried loads and loads over the years and this is definitely the best one. It's also got a really good mapping system as uh, as they as the um, on the cluster as you'll see there you can see uh, the different so stations coming in on the cluster and if I if I click on one it'll basically go straight there and then it can I can also send the command to go straight to the rotor so the actual antenna will turn exactly uh, as soon as the, as soon as it, I click on one of those um, icons there on the, my left hand monitor so I keep my eye on that basically um, let's just turn that down just turn that down on the <laughs> so it's uh, always the way but I love this logging program got it uh, last year before Christmas absolutely fantastic the uh, the computer I use in the shack is a very small um, Mac mini it's uh, two 500 gig hard drives so a terabyte in total and they're both SSD drives so it's rocket fast it's really really quick extremely quiet if you get uh, any computer for the shack strongly recommend getting a Mac mini if you want to use Mac logger DX the best logging program so uh, and it looks stunning as well and like i said i've got it on the cluster at the moment it, it's just a wonderful wonderful program when you uh, get a station come in there right qsl goes up qsl card goes onto here and um absolutely fantastic you can see that one's come in there and if you can see that and then it will move over to this side and then the next one will come in and uh, it's just absolutely fantastic it really is a lovely logging program and uh, the best I've ever used I would not use anything else but uh, you can see it's gone over there now and then the next one's come in because obviously the cluster's uh, still working all the time and it gives you a really good sort of uh, idea of um, of the actual uh, you know the way the propagation is running etc I'll just show you quickly if I uh, if I quickly uh, put it on web you'll see that it will it will go to a QTH as well so as they come in it will basically see that look at that it will go straight over there QTH and it will change in a minute as another one comes in on the cluster and there's another one <laughs> isn't that fantastic what other logging program does that you know it does it automatically got it on auto lookup so as it comes in on the cluster you see uh, the clusters here you'll see that it changes on the uh, on the uh, monitor on the left hand side so really handy when I'm speaking to someone I've actually seen many many antenna systems uh, just speaking to people let me just turn it back to uh, a 3d uh, hang on I think that's 3d no it was on 2d wasn't it that's that's uh, the 3d view and I'm going to turn it back to uh, 2d and uh, beautiful high definition it's, it's a lovely program but you will need a Mac to run it it doesn't run on Windows so that's one of the reasons why I bought this little Mac mini last Christmas bought it for myself for Christmas and I thought yeah why not let's do it uh, a shack sign uh, well that's uh, self-explanatory everyone's got to have a shack sign <laughs> okay back to the LP 500 let's uh, let's crack on this is a, a fantastic piece of kit really love this meter and Larry uh, uh, NHLP let me just uh, move my microphone out the way I've got a dog uh, pining in the background it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit, and I've been waiting for this one. I was on the waiting list for a long, long time, and I was uh, on. I've had I had my LP500 for quite a while. I was one of um, the beaters, so uh, one of the beta testers uh, for Larry, and uh, absolutely couldn't wait to get it. And it's been fantastic. Um, can't fault it in any way. Let me just uh, make sure on a clear frequency. It's uh, quite quiet on uh, there today, anyway. But yeah, I love it how you can tune and it goes if you've got it on auto range you'll see uh, it'll go up to uh, like 25 uh, watts at the moment radios on 25 uh, just about and you see uh, the uh, the uh, VSWR here um, you can plug into four couplers so obviously you can have VHF UHF HF uh, plugged into it as well it will auto detect as well where the uh, RF is coming from uh, it's got all kinds of different modes on it let me just uh, I just switched the amplifier on a minute quickly, and you can see uh, the uh, it will jump up a bit more. Let me just um, put the amplifier on. Here we go, and uh, you can see that it's gone up to uh, 300, and uh, 
you can see the scale on the actual meters changed to 300 not 25 so it's got it on auto range and I really do love that feature I really really love that feature the uh, trapezoidal display let me just uh, change modes quickly and I love it how you can have it on split screen as well let me just uh, quickly go uh, on USB and give you uh, a little bit of speech I don't know if you can see this uh, G0 Sierra Echo Charlie a uh, Golf uh, 0 Sierra Echo Charlie uh, just doing a test transmission G0 Sierra Echo Charlie I love how you can have it on split you can see your VSWR um, your uh, um, power and also have the uh, the split for the, uh, the audio uh, waveform and I also love how you can let's just we quickly go to trape trapezoidal display I'm just going to change that to uh, channel 2 and if I now go to um, if I uh, go to uh, key up and just talk here you can see the trapezoidal display so that's basically uh, the uh, output from the radio and you can see that it's nice and linear it's extremely quick it really is quick you can freeze it as well there's a freeze button there you can all do all kinds of different uh, things uh, on it and uh, the output coming from the amplifier obviously so you can really see that it's uh, nice and linear and especially when you're tuning you can see it go from like non-linear to linear and it's really really uh, a lovely feature to have on uh, on a meter to, to make sure that your, your amplifier is working well the other feature I really like uh, which I'm going to try on uh, two-tone uh, shortly is the uh, ability to see your uh, ESSB curves let me just uh, I'll just show you again as you can see uh, my curves are, are going up uh, really need to do this on two tone really this is my uh, my own curves and you can see that I've got slightly highs on the, the bottom part low end of my audio range there around about sort of 150 they need to come down slightly actually so uh, it's going to be handy to uh, set up the audio and this is obviously uh, setting up the audio um, from uh, a point of view of ESSB and also you can do it from two-tone obviously two-tone would be the best way to do it because you don't have to worry about your peaks and so forth uh, on the audio going up and down so it's a more sort of stable look at uh, what's actually happening if you do it from two-tone but um, a beautiful beautiful meter um, I'm so pleased with it, it uh, as soon as I got it out of the box I just started to say this quickly I'm gonna do some more videos on it uh, and more so you know more in-depth videos on uh, in the future I just thought I'd just get it on YouTube to show people and um, but it's an absolutely beautiful beautiful piece of kit I know that Larry's doing uh, uh, two versions uh, LP 700 and LP 500 the reason I wanted an LP 500 was I didn't want it coming too high uh, so I can still see my monitors in the shack here so they've got the three monitors here and I wanted to make sure that um, it wasn't going to be too high it's actually on the lowest uh, setting at the moment for uh, let me just show you this quickly if we go to settings I don't know if you can see this uh, the, this camera I've got is a very very old camera and uh, but I'm just going to show you um, if I go down to brightness and set the uh, brightness on this and it's it's so so good at night it's just the right brightness and it will go all the way up I mean it's very very vibrant let me just quickly show you this is on 100% if I go back to mode I don't know if you can see that the camera probably doesn't like it but uh, the great thing about this meter you know you can see it from all angles there's no there's not such a thing as you know what you, you um, you know I, I'm really on the side now that you can still see it the the quality of the, the the monitor on the LP 500 is fantastic it's equally as good as the 7800 it's uh, really really good and uh, I'm glad that Larry took the extra time and had the uh, and decided to go with the screens which had the, the higher resolution because it really does look fantastic it's an absolutely stunning piece of kit let me just uh, turn that brightness back let me just uh, quickly scroll down again in the menus you can uh, change all kinds of different things you can uh, change uh, you know peak hold times let me just turn it back down you can change the coupler uh, so you can switch between the couplers or have it on auto range or auto channel which I do so basically whatever uh, I use so I used uh, this radio and eventually this radio is going to be plugged into the LP500 as well and uh, so if I'm on VHF UHF hopefully uh, it will uh, it'll go straight through to the LP500 and it will uh, record that if I uh, speak on the HF radio or either one of the Kenwood or the uh, 7800 then it's also going to uh, auto uh, identify it um, you can set the power alarm I'll, I'll just show you this quickly if I just turn the amp off it's got a lovely uh, ringtone that you can uh, change you can change the alarm pitch as well let me just show you this quickly if I just uh, key up and I'm hoping you can hear this just stand by I turn up the power 
above, I think, minus 60. So we're just going to have to turn up the power. 